Microtargeting is a technology by which one uses individual information from a combination of voter registration databases and consumer databases in order to predict how people will vote and whether they will vote. They would prefer not to target inadvertently um, members of the opposing party uh, for fear of mobilizing them or for fear of uh, uh, causing them to become active, act actively opposed. But secondly, when they're trying to target their message, in, a persuasive message, in the context of an election where uh, many of the voters will not turn out at all, they don't want to waste their money on people who will stay home. They'd like to focus uh, their attention on what are known as likely voters. So micro-targeting gives them a sense of the probability that a person will show up and the probability that they will either vote Democratic or Republican. I think it's, a, it's an infant technology. and, and it works a little bit, but not perhaps as well as uh, the fables about micro-targeting uh, would lead one to believe. I think that the one area in which um, innovations have been clearest has been in campaign fundraising. Um, the advent of technologies that make it very, very easy for people to donate over the web uh, and for people to organize over the web um, are real, and those have been huge cost savers for campaigns. But in terms of voter outreach or persuasion tactics, uh, I don't think that there has been um, anything like a dramatic innovation. I know that this is a subject of active debate among academics and journalists, but I would say that um, one can already see the, uh, the ongoing surge of money associated with super PACs. Um, whether this trend would have occurred anyway is a matter of speculation, but there's no question that this, that this election will see an unprecedented amount of, uh, uh, of soft money going into uh, presidential campaigns. And um, at last report, it's, it's expected to be over a billion dollars. I think that on the one hand, it certainly gives um, people who are extremely wealthy uh, an opportunity to have a kind of outsized influence on the way in which campaigns are structured. Whether they have an outsized influence on the way in which elections turn out remains to be seen. The election is expected to be close, and so the answer is yes. Um, and even if people have made up their minds, they don't necessarily stay in place when events unfold. And so, uh, for example, in the context of the 2008 election, even though it was thought that many Americans had made up their mind fairly early on, uh, the series of seemingly uh, you know, tumultuous events of, the, of 2008 um, buffeted the electorate considerably. And, as a result, states that never would have been thought to be battleground states became battleground states um, as uh, public uh, opinion surged in favor of Obama. I would say that they should allocate even more resources than they are currently allocating to the ground game, to uh, the kind of door-to-door -door or volunteer phone banking activities that currently make up a significant part of their get out the vote drive, but uh, probably ought to make up an even more significant part. Because if you think about how much uh, on the ground activity you can purchase for the say three, four, five hundred million dollars that they will otherwise spend on last minute television commercials, I think that um, you know, the, the number of votes that they're leaving on the table is really considerable.